Hey, what's up, everybody? Got a small ColecoVision lot to show you guys that I got from my buddy Jim. System and some games, and <laughs> not gonna make this very short video here, as I got stuff to talk about here. Is so, uh, one of the games may be valuable, at least twenty bucks or more. Otherwise, now I got both versions of it, and the system here. It's one of those deals to where price was right. If I got it working or got it for parts, good deal either way. And this was more, I can fix the problem, but didn't have to because I had another system that didn't look all that nice that was working, so I just swapped the innards. And now I got two beauteous looking ColecoVisions. So anyways, start on the games here. Anyways, this one, missing the label, but the cart's in good shape. Mr. Do. That one, label's not the best shape. Donkey Kong Jr. This one, label's been taped on. Donkey Kong. Then, I'll show you guys this thing. Got a little carry case. Made by Dimensions for Children, 1982, New York, New York. Just holds eight carts. They're kind of cool. Anyways, most of these games are, are in good shape. I only had a few that were pretty miffed. This one just has a few little wrinkles in the label where it's kind of lifted, but it's not fading or anything. Otherwise, it looks good. River Raid. This one's in great shape. Venture. Mousetrap. Great shape. Ladybug. Label's not in the best shape, but the cart's in good shape. Good game. Cosmic Avenger, great shape. This one, the cart damn near looks new, and it still has the two overlays fitting back here. War Games. Another one that's in really good condition. Space Fury. Then the one here, I've got the American version. This is the CBS version out of England. Copy of Frenzy. And, uh, I've tried about four different sites on rarity guides. All they list is the American version. And a lot of them just say, yeah, rarity, but some of them give the price, some of them don't. And you don't know how old the list is, so you don't know if those prices are still current or what. But all I can go by is my favorite site, Atari2600.com. He's got the American version, just the cart loose, in good shape, for I think $17.95. So, either worth about the same or more or less, I don't know. It's the first time I've seen a CBS game, period, for ColecoVision. All mine are pretty much American. And it does work. It's not pale or anything. The system, I believe, the CBS ColecoVision, I think that was pale, at least in Europe or whatever. But uh, as far as I can tell, the game carts play on any of them. Anyways, the system it was just the system, one controller, power supply that damn near looks new, which <laughs> if it was just for the power supply, if I got it online, that probably would have been the price I paid on the deal he gave me. And then uh, one controller, but the controller looks as new as the system. And all they tore off on this, which is no big deal, it's normally just a paper sticker right above here that just explains stuff like don't take a game cartridge out while it's turned on, vice versa, like don't turn it on and then pop in a game and blah blah blah, and then the sticker on the bottom that just gives the serial number and whatnot and where it's made. Otherwise, there is not hardly any scratches on this thing. If any, man, they are really light. I'm thinking somebody kept this in a drawer or boxed up or something. And that front sticker, excellent condition. This one here, scratches it all really light. And what's crazy, the controller, which I can tell this thing didn't get played much, that disc, 
there's not a scratch on it. So anyways, Jim doesn't know anything on ColecoVision. So he didn't test it or anything, he was just selling it as is. And what was wrong with it is the little RF jack on the back was loose to where you're not getting good contact at all. I hooked it up and I couldn't get a picture, let alone hardly any sound, unless I pushed on the cable. So it was really loose. And taking one of these apart enough to where I know it's going to be not hard to fix, but just tedious. It's not like some systems to where you open up the system, take the little cover off the RF box, boom, there it is, and you just re-solder it in place and you're all good to go. This, you got to desolder a whole bunch of stuff. As a, take out the guts, take off the main shielding, then there's the RF box with that shielding, you take the lid off, and then the little circuit board is upside down so you can't get at anything. That is soldered to the shielding in four different spots, so you got to desolder that, and then you can lift off the outside shielding, and still that board is soldered to the main board via, I don't know if it's an actual circuit or if it's like a hard shell type ribbon cable, but it doesn't give you much slack to get at it, as the uh, little RF jacks on these, there's like a little kind of a box type shielding over them to where the back of it's open but you can't get at it from the sides so it's like didn't want to break anything trying to mess with that I think the best way to fix one of those is probably just desolder that whole little RF jack from the board fix it and then put it back on but I have the other system so just swapped parts and it's already at least got one chip in it so one thing, I don't know if this is just a coincidence or what, but uh, if you get one to where those chips are bad that have to do with the controllers, start out with controller one, get it all put together, well not completely, but enough to where you can hook it up and test it out and see if it works, because it was the controller one chip on both systems. And uh, this one that I got hardly ever got played, so the chips were still good in it. So cool. Not a bad deal. Anyways, for all this, 20 bucks. <laughs> I keep saying it, man. If I could ever get up early enough, as he gets up bright and early in the morning and goes out jogging with his wife, and they just hit any yard sales that they run into in their little area, I gotta follow him someday. <laughs> that dude must just have an absolute awesome skill of talking down prices, because that tells me he didn't pay hardly anything for this. They could have been selling it as broken or didn't know. A lot of people around here, they won't tell you if it's broken. you got to really look stuff over. But that's definitely something to look at for anybody that doesn't know how to fix stuff. As for anybody else, they would have been disappointed. Because it looks really nice. I mean, you wouldn't expect this to be broke. But uh, that is, it's, it's a tedious repair. And on the chips, same thing. Tedious repair if it's the chips that are bad, which on that... What happen is when you start up the system, normally it goes to that blue screen where you select one or two players in your skill level, and then it goes to the game. It will bypass that like you're pressing a button, and then on mine what it was doing, like burger time, it would automatically just start up the game, and my character would start moving to the left of the screen and stay there. I could get him to move the other direction, but as soon as I let go of the joystick, he moved back, so it screws all that up. And on uh, something else that he had, if he has it next month still, is I don't see anybody hitting on it. And uh, I don't think this is any special edition type. But he's got a clear blue PS1 to where the shell is clear blue plastic, kind of like what they did with the uh, N64s. And uh, I remember one of the games type stores in Bullhead or whatever, maybe Havasu, had it to where you could bring in your system, and I think it was for PS1, either the big or the small one, or Dreamcast or whatever, and they had these clear plastic shells that were different colors, and they just 
take the guts out of your system and put it in the new. And I'm thinking that's what it is on this one. Because uh, I did check online. This is for the original first version PlayStation. But I found a PS1, same thing. It's like they took the guts out of the original system and put it into a clear plastic shell. But it's only wanting 30 bucks, so if you guys know anything on the rarity on that, let me know, man, because I might snatch it up for that price just to have an oddball in the collection. Otherwise, I got a pile of freaking original PlayStations, either working or not, so I need another one. Like, I need a hole in the head if it's not valuable. Catch you guys later.